Okay, welcome. Here's another chance to take a look at some multiple choice questions for A-level. Uh, we're going to take a little cluster of four questions here, each on an aspect of international trade. So let's see how you get on on these questions. Question one, an economy with a long history of extensive barriers to trade, such as uh, tariffs or quotas, decides to switch to totally free trade. What is most likely to increase in the short term? Press the pause button, have a go. I'll be back in a few seconds with the right answer. OK, question one, what did you get for this one? The answer is A, consumer surplus. If we eliminate import tariffs or import quotas, in theory, prices in markets will come down and that should increase consumer surplus. The government will get less tax revenue if the tariff is dis if, if, it, if it disappears. Lower prices reduces inflationary pressure and uh, open trade tends to cut the profits of domestic companies. And here's a quick analysis diagram to remind us of, of a tariff cut. If we cut the tariff and import tariff on cars, for example, the price of cars would fall if other countries can supply cars at cheaper prices. That's a good example of an analysis diagram to draw. Hopefully you got question one right. Let's have a go at question two. Table below shows different possible outputs of apples and bananas for two countries. Uh, we're assuming all, only two goods are produced and all resources are used to their maximum. Country Y decides to specialise in the production of the good in which it has a comparative advantage. Country X decide, decides to part specialise. 75% of resources go into the good in which it has a comparative advantage, 25% in the other good. So the question is, what will be the total output of apples and bananas? Have a go. OK, what did you get for question two? Well, the uh, country Y has an absolute, uh, sort of comparative advantage in apples. It's half as good at producing apples. It's not, it's only uh, five sixteenths as good at producing bananas. So country Y will produce bananas, uh, sorry, apples only. That means it will produce 50 apples. Country X has a comparative advantage in bananas. It's going to allocate three quarters of their resources to bananas. So they're going to go from 80 to 60 25% of its resources on apples will go down from 100, so they'll, they'll be able to produce 25. So the answer is C, country Y has a comparative advantage in apples, they can supply 50 apples with full specialisation. Country X will produce 60 bananas and 25 apples, so 75 apples in total and 60 bananas. Question three, the world consists of two countries, country one and country two. They're producing X and Y. Country 1 has a relative shortage of labour, whereas Country 2 has plentiful supplies of both labour and land. The production of X requires a lot of land but little labour. The production of Y requires a lot of labour but very little land. What, given this information, what can we be deducing about Country 1? Have a go. So Country 1 has labour shortages. So therefore, we expect the labour costs to be quite high with wages being driven up. The correct answer for country one is it has a comparative advantage in the production of X. The, uh, the product, which requires a lot of land but little labour, will offer the lowest relative opportunity cost for country X. It will tend to specialise in, in that product. And here's question four in our cluster of four questions on trade. The UK exports mass market cars to Germany and Germany exports mass market cars to the UK. Which combination of factors explains this pattern of trade? Press the pause button when you're ready. Have a go. I'll be back with the right answer. OK, and the correct answer to this question is C. Consumers who are buying vehicles attach a high value to product differentiation. They like choice. And there are, some, there are some significant economies of scale in car production. Let's work this one through. This is what's called intra-industry trade. Take a look at the pattern of German exports of goods. You can see here that cars take up 12% of exports, vehicle parts, etc. They're pretty good at cars. Uh, they're good at pharmaceuticals, packaged medicaments, etc. They're pretty good at all kinds of manufacturing 
uh, products. Take a look at the UK export pattern of goods. Not totally dissimilar, isn't it? Cars is in there, pharmaceuticals is in there, gas turbines, computers, telephones, etc. If we put the two countries together, we see a relatively similar pattern of trade. We call this intra-industry trade. And what that means is that these countries have the th they have the capacity to produce lots of products and therefore export export them. That comes from economies of scale. They have the capabilities to be able to produce a range of products. They've got the human capital to produce many different types of products, including cars. And crucially, consumers in these markets, in these high income countries, they like choice. They like to be able to choose from different makes of car, uh, different, uh, different vehicles of, of many different types. So that's a combination of capacity, capability and choice leads to a high level of intra-industry trade in the markets, in the traded markets in Germany and the UK. So there we go. There are four questions on aspects of international trade. I hope you did well on those, those four particular questions.